Okay, I'm not making this up, guys. My hand is moving. I'm not doing anything. I'm not making this up. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I see it right there. It's her hand. Grace, are you moving your hand? No. That no. sounds weird. I am not doing anything. Back, back up. Back up. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah. I can't hear. Oh god, I can't hear properly. Tombstone, home to Lawman Wyatt Earp, Gunfighter Doc Holliday, Dancing Girls, Saloons, Gambling, and Those Ladies of the Night. This Arizona town had something for everyone in the late 1800s. Well, the days of the Old West are over. Now ghosts are said to haunt this quaint old town. Famous ghost stories here are about the shadow people. Don't look directly at them, but when you're walking down the boardwalk, especially at night, if you just, out of the corner of your eye, you'll see people, maybe between the buildings looking out or something, then you look at them and they're gone. So, the Unexplained Cases team rolled into Tombstone in hopes of making contact with the ghosts and spirits of this historic Arizona town, and also speak with the people who've had their own paranormal experiences. I took about four more steps and all of a sudden, I had something grab my shoulder. I spun around thinking my friend snuck up behind me, and there was nothing there. Um, there is so much paranormal activity going on around here. It is absolutely amazing. Here you go. Hard. The girls eventually traded in those smoke wagons for some ghost hunting gear, and what we experienced was a first for the Unexplained Cases team. Back up. Okay, back off. We'll share with you more of this incredible evidence coming up. First, some background about Tombstone. Historians say it got its name from prospector Ed Shifflin. The Pennsylvania native went to Arizona, home to the Apache Indians, to find silver. He was given a dire warning, though. He'd lose his scalp to the Indians, and the only stones he would find were not silver, not gold, but on his tombstone. So when he did strike it rich with silver, he named the town Tombstone in 1879. Two years later, October 26, 1881. Arguably one of the most famous events in the American Old West happened at a place called the OK Corral. Tensions between the outlaw cowboys, Billy Claiborne, Ike and Billy Clanton, and Tom and Frank McClory and Lawman brothers, Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan Earp, along with their friend Doc Holliday, led to 30 shots fired. Tom and Frank and Billy, they were all killed. Virgil and Morgan were shot but survived. Doc Holliday grazed, Wyatt, not a scratch. The bodies of the dead cowboys eventually ended up here at the Boot Hill Cemetery, along with other Tombstone residents, many who met a violent end. Thanks to our special tour guides, the Unexplained Cases team was introduced to many Tombstone residents who wanted to tell us their ghost stories. First stop, Big Nose Kate's Saloon, which was the old Grand Hotel. Kate was a famous prostitute, her longtime companion, Doc Holliday. Today, the hotel is a saloon named after her. Downstairs is said to be haunted by the spirit of an old hotel janitor nicknamed the Swamper. Doctors say the area is very active. I came into work, so I always come in through those stairs. And I get to about here when I realize there was a shirt thrown here. Um, there were two or three just falling right from where the shirts were stacked. And then there was one behind the counter by the register. And, and obviously you didn't do it and you don't think any of your co-workers were playing a trick on you or anything I like that? I had closed everything up the night before. We tried to make contact with the Swamper, Kate, even Doc Holiday using our ovulus. We have Eaton Holiday. Holiday? Yeah. Like Doc Holiday? We also measured changes in the electromagnetic field with our K2 meter. Can you light it up to the red? Oops. Did it do it? Can you light it up to the red dot? It did it the first time I it thought. Did. Are you guys picking up anything cool? Yeah, I did. Yeah, just yeah. trying. The, we have a K2 meter, which is for like that measures the uh, electromagnetic field. Our next stop, the Crystal Palace Saloon, which was originally known as the Golden Eagle Brewing Company. It was one of the first saloons in Tombstone. Its owners, Kim and RJ Herrig, say they have a few spirits of their own. It was like 2.30 in the morning. I was here all by myself. I was up at the end of the bar. 
you know the sound of spurs on the boardwalk? Mm -hmm. Well, I heard walking down the hallway where the restrooms are. So that, that sound is different from the boardwalk sound, totally different. So then I thought, oh, I left, I locked the doors and somebody's in the bathroom. So I came down, always in there. I thought I'm hearing things. As soon as I got down to the end of the bar again, the cowboy was walking in the hallway. We tried connecting with the dead with our ovulus and the spirit box. The results were intriguing. Aim and shoot tree. There used to be the hanging tree outside here. That was a hanging tree. Really? Right out this window here, right out this door. The, the tree that's out there now is, they took, they cut the big one off and left the little one there, and now the little one's the big one. But that was the tombstone hang where they hung people. Really? While these two spots could be haunted, there is one place in Tombstone that nearly everybody claims to have had some kind of paranormal experience. I've been here for 15 years, and if there is such a thing as a haunted town, it's Tombstone. And if there is only one haunted place in the whole world, I'll bet it's the Birdcage Theater. Its owner is Billy Hunley. Well, the Birdcage was a combination saloon, gambling hall, and a house of ill repute, all in one. There were 16 gunfights, seven fatal, killing 26 people, and leaving over 140 bullet holes throughout the walls, ceilings, and floors. Hunley claims to have had many paranormal experiences. I've heard walking through the foyer into the back room. I was sitting here looking uh, at the Gmail and I knew that there was somebody over my shoulder. I could, I could literally smell her, believe it or not. And then she sprayed perfume under my nose and pulled my hair and, and then left. Oh, cool. So these chairs are usually really far back right here and this is where they do the lights out portion and there's that they, we've had uh, faces in the cases looking back at us mm -hmm. uh, we've had shadows moving all over people uh, things going up and down the staircase this mm -hmm. is where Jason and Grant saw the lady in white right here going down no the stairs way. yeah they saw her they could see the pleats in her her outfit um, and then Tod Cody Polston took a photograph of two of his um, uh, girls right over here and he was at the bottom of the stairs and when he takes the photograph there's a white object blocking both of them out. Oh, is it matter day or night? I mean do these things It doesn't matter, no. Oh, they do? Okay. No. And that's where people get a little confused at is that they always want to go on the 9.30 or the 11 o'clock ghost tour. Well, some nights we don't offer those and you don't have to be at the witching hour to have this stuff happen in this oh, building. No. It's morning, noon, and night. Like I said, I'm and here you get at 8, in 8 in o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it, it's going at that time. And it's not every day, you know. The ghost tours, they've, they've made a lot of... Um, uh, they do a certain amount of stuff during the ghost tour to try to make them interact with the K2 meters and oh, sure, other yeah. things, you know. And we use trigger objects like coins and chips and, and um, cards, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, doing cards, uh, uh, shuffling cards helps a lot. So yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. This is what uh, they usually make Joshy move is the table up there. Oh, you want to show me just real table. quick? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, the, uh, I see, the mortician's table. Yeah, the mortician's table right here. I can't make him do it. Joshy, would you want to move this uh, for them? Yeah, he's trying to. Do you have any energy? Can you make him move that? Come on, Joshy, move it for him. Um, but it moves a certain way. It doesn't move like wind's blowing it. It, it right. shakes, kind of. Is a specific what it does. way where yeah, it kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. And I was hoping I could get one of, uh, uh, get Mike up here because like, so him cool. and Josh kind of got a good rapport going. They've got a little bond or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh and of course, a lot of my ghost hosts, but nobody's here yet. It's too early. Right next to the birdcage is Nora's Place, a tombstone shop that used to be the undertaker's office in the 1800s. Um, I was helping her daughter, Nora's daughter, Audrey, one day plan her wedding stuff and we were in here, everything was quiet and we started hearing dragging sounds. Um, kind of ignored it a little bit and a little bit later I was leaning on one of these counters and heard dragging sounds in the back of the building and as I turned to look I caught an apparition halfway in between the door moving from the right to the left. Business owner Nora Weed believes her shop could be a portal for spirits into Tombstone. So you have several spirits back there? I I've mean, had over 800 names out of this building so I never know who's coming and going. And then I have some that come and just never leave when they come with people. So. 
And you think it's because you thought there might be a portal down in the basement there? I think so. I think that it, uh, this whole town probably does. I mean, this whole town is haunted. So the Unexplained Cases team joined Nora and some of her friends for a paranormal investigation in the place where the deceased were kept in Tombstone. I want all of my residents to know that I have kids in here tonight. You guys know my rules about the kids. I laid that down last night when he was in here. This is no difference than when my grandchildren are in here. You back up off of him. Do you understand me? Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Yeah. So that was so clear. You could like tell that. Nora uses a laser grid to detect motion, audio equipment to hear voices from the dead, and also a flashlight that can be supposedly turned off and on by a ghost when answering our questions. The one to the right, her name is Gracie, gentlemen, but she is not a soul deaf, so you can go over there and interact with her. Gracie was the first brave soul to step up and make a connection with one of the building's spirits. We had no idea what was yet to happen to her over the next 10 minutes. Okay, I just seen something reach out in front of Gracie. In front? Yeah, to the side of her. On her? On her right side. I actually saw Is it close to my fingertips? Yeah, I was down there. That's where I saw a hand reach out. Oh, I feel it now. Nora believes the spirit that was interacting with Gracie is named Mike, possibly a man who was murdered near Tombstone. Okay, I'm not making this up, guys. My hand is moving. I'm not doing anything. I'm not making this up. Oh, yeah. My, oh, my God. Oh, I see it right there. She is very pretty. This is so weird because I am not even moving my hand. This is cool. No, it looked like somebody kissing your hand. That's exactly I you know mean, how I man thought it was gonna happen. Whoa. But what began as an innocent interaction took a more serious and a dark turn. Okay, okay Sally, you to back up. Okay, back off. Dude, I had to close down. Oh god. So what, it just felt like that you just felt like when you were yeah. sucked all the life out of you just, then or something? Yeah. I can't hear. Oh God, I can't hear properly. Okay, baby, just take some deep breaths. I know, I'm okay. Mike, I do not appreciate this. Gracie was rattled, but fortunately not harmed. I don't know, I was just standing up there and then all of a sudden my stomach started hurting. And I just knew something was wrong because my head and then... I asked Nora why a spirit would interact with Gracie this way. When you're an empath, they can help lift your hands and stuff. Um, he kind of thinks your daughter is cute and was flirting. He actually was trying to take her to the back room is what he was trying. That's why I said no, 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 no. And Dad says no, 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 too. Definitely. Yes. When I have kids on tour, I love the kids on tour because kids are the ones that pick things out. So. For me, the kids are the ones who I'm telling the parents to listen to, take the pictures where they say. I have had kids point out spots and places for people to take pictures and just crazy stuff shows up. One night at the end of the tour, I had a lady take a picture up at the Oriental and the Oriental at the time was a ladies clothing store. We got two men in there. She says, now I think it's the mannequins. We went and took a look at the mannequins. The mannequins do not have heads. They don't have faces. It's women's clothing in there. And these were two men that you could see in between the mannequins. Her two six-year-old daughters were the ones who told her to take the picture. Tombstone, Arizona. Guns, girls, gambling, and yes, that other G word, ghosts. 
This once thriving mining town is buzzing with paranormal activity. It is very easy to see why many believe Tombstone is one of the most haunted places in the world. Reporting for Unexplained Cases, I'm Darren Dito.